All right, so we now went from the pole zero plot till the poles and the zeros that we put in this formula here. We multiplied them out up until we got this formula here. So I'm just going to clean it up a bit. Just going to clean it. Oh, sorry. So we can start with a, a better handwriting. Some might even say typed. Let me just get the equation. So we're left with this formula z to the power 2 plus 0 plus 0. You can see it's that one there. z to the power 2 minus 1, 412 to the power z minus of z1, 0 0.5. So that's that formula there. So I'm just going to delete this one. So as you can see, that is our formula now, and we need to get it in this format. We need to get it in this format. So we can see here we've got z to the power plus 2, z to the power plus 1, and for this format to know which ones are b and a's, we need it to the z to the power minus 1, minus 2. So the next step here is we can see that z is the most, the largest power is 2, so we just have to multiply top and bottom with minus z to the power minus 2. So if we multiply, if you think back to school, if it's 1 over 1 or a over a or whatever you put over itself, it's equal to 1. So we can say this times this because it's just times 1. But it is going to get us into this formula here. Sorry, let me just redo it again. It is going to give us this formula here. So let's quickly see. If we say, let me just move this one out of the way because this is the format we want it in. If we say this times this, z to the power minus 2 times 2, then that will be 0. This is still school math. Still remember this from school? If you say z to the power positive 1 times z to the power minus 1, it was going to give you z minus 1. And then the last one would be plus 2. So after we multiply all of that out above and below the equation of the divide, we should get this. So if we multiply this one, let me just get my brush here. If we multiply this with this, we're going to get this one here. Now what do you see? Can you see that this one is the same as this formula here? And now you can see B0 is 1. B1 is 0. B2 is 0. Can you see it's the value just before that? So this is how we calculate the coefficient. 1. Can you see minus 1.42 is A1. And 0 0.5 would be A2. So if you add more values, you would have had more values in it. If you add more poles and zeros, if there was more poles, more zeros, there would have been a bigger power of z, maybe z to the power 3, z to the power 4, and you had to multiply with a bigger power here, if this was z to the power 3, if you had more zeros, poles and zero placements, you would have had a bigger power, you need to multiply with a bigger power minus value, maybe z to the power minus 4, maybe z to the power minus 6, and it means you'll have to go here, B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. It depends on how much you have. And then this one will go down and down and down. Depends on the size. So the next step I'm going to show you is how to program this value in LabVIEW. In the basic LabVIEW that we have. We're not going to use the toolboxes. Just draw this structure as it is. What you should notice is... What you should notice is, is that... This B0, B1, B2, can you see the values there? Those, for the values of A, can you see it's minus, minus A1, minus A2. So in this case, that's minus 1.42. Everybody see it? So that would then be plus 1.42. Just one thing to note that those are the minus values for those. 